can see I have a lovely salad. They call this a summer salad I bought at the deli. Now the chips are my idea. I just crunch them up and put them on there for some extra texture and uh, some nice crunchy noises, that sort of thing. Got myself a San Pellegrino orange flavored sparkling uh, water. Now, before I go any further, Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year to all of you. I hope 2024 is an amazing year for you. I know we all have our ups and downs, and 2023 may have been a bit of, bit of a rough year for some of you, so if that was the case, I hope it's much better, okay? Now, like I said, I bought this salad at the deli. He's a very nice guy. Mom 
sister stayed in Saskatoon because they were on their own anyway. They had jobs in their own lives and they were out of school and on their own. stayed in touch. We wrote letters back and forth all the time. All the time. We really stayed in touch a lot. The minute I got a letter from him, I write one back. I ended up with a stack of letters. And it was funny, we would just, you know, talk about our lives and he'd tell me what he was up to and he was making new friends, had a whole new life in Windsor and This went on for all through the fall, winter, spring. Now in June 1974, my parents decided to move out to British Columbia, to Vancouver Island, to the town I still live in called Nanaimo. landscaping they were putting in a garden just because when they bought the house brand new it was just a house and 
and the driveway and that was it no no nothing you know and so we did a lot of that but you know when you're a teenager you know you, you, you want to be doing other things besides that so sometime around July about a month after we arrived my mom and dad called me to the kitchen and they said how would you like to uh, take the train back to Windsor to visit Richard? I thought, wow, fantastic. That'd be great. I'd love to do that. So they sort of um, looked into it. Turned out that um, the train fare from I would take the train from Vancouver to Toronto, switch trains to go from Toronto to Windsor. And that was uh, a total of $80 each way. Now taking the train from Toronto, sorry, taking the train from Vancouver to Toronto is basically the same as taking a train from Los Angeles to New York. It's basically the same distance, same thing. So. I thought, oh, that'd be great. So we, we talked it over and they looked into it and that sort of thing. So I phoned Richard, let him know what my plans were that I was coming to visit him. As the day drew near, I was already anticipating all this. I couldn't wait. And the plan was I had to take the train from Vancouver to Toronto and then from Toronto to Windsor, which is just a couple hours by train. Not that far. And it was three nights and four days on the train. I was really nervous. I 
didn't want to let on that I was nervous, but it suddenly dawned on me that this was all happening. I was embarking on this journey all by myself. I mean, I used to ride the bus in Saskatoon all by myself, and Richard and I used to hitchhike up to, uh, you know, northern Saskatchewan, go camping and all that, but we, we did that together, you know. I'd never gone on a journey by myself, you know. I never rode the ferry by myself at that point. And because we just moved there, I'd only been on the ferry a handful of times. That's when we vacationed, you know. When we'd go from Saskatoon to Vancouver Island and vacation out here. And uh, I didn't even know the town of Nanaimo that I lived in for a month. You know, didn't know the town at all. And I didn't know Vancouver. I mean, it, was, it may as well have been New York or Tokyo. I just didn't know it, right? Huge city. Never been on the train by myself. So, and uh, actually, I don't recall ever being on a train, period. So, I was very, very nervous, and I kind of displayed that behavior in uh, being kind of irritable and kind of grumpy. And I remember my sister and my mom were talking to me, and I was just really tense and, you know, irritable, and because I was nervous, right? And so, uh, they said, well, your bus is here, it's time to go on. I said, okay. Goodbye, you know, like this, right? I mean, I I had no travel experience at all. I was not streetwise. I mean, yeah, I used to hang out the streets of Saskatoon, but that was always with my friends. And you know, what did we do besides maybe you know smoke a doobie, listen to Cheech and Chong, and bang our heads to Deep Purple? basically all I did in my life, I didn't really do much. So we, uh, they, I'm at the bus depot, they leave, I get off the bus. I remember as the bus was leaving, it's driving down to the ferry terminal. I'm thinking, wow, this is really happening. So the bus drives on the ferry, you know, these ferries are huge, they hold Hundreds of cars, huge. So I get on there, and um, you know, the, I'm just like a regular passenger, and I'm just walking around, and you know, just kind of checking things out. So the ferry docks in Vancouver. Get back on the bus, and the bus goes to the the bus depot in Vancouver. So so far, things are going quite well, you know. This big white suitcase, you know, great big white thing. And um, I go up front, sure enough, there's taxi cabs all lined up. So I grab myself a cab. I got to Union Station in Toronto, I would switch to 
huge mistake. and I 
was just feeling up because I'd, I'd made some friends I'd connected. And what made it even more interesting was Marie was quite a, a nice looking woman. And um, so this is this is all kind of cool, you know. So um, in no time at all, we'd be sitting together, smoking cigarettes, and you know, just talking, and you know, talking to her sister, and you know, the, the two little boys, and ready to enjoy myself. So we went and had dinner together, and then um, later that night we went to the bar car, and we're sitting in the bar car having drinks, and I'm thinking, man, how lucky am I, you know, I got this, I met this nice girl, you know. They live in Toronto, they're on their way back from Vancouver, they uh, were in Vancouver on vacation, on their way back to Toronto, they live in a suburb of Toronto. each other's company and all that. There wasn't uh, much else really, you know. In no time at all we were through the Prairie Provinces, you know. Uh, like I said, once you hit the uh, the flat parts of Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, it just flies by. So we get to Ontario and we're getting close to Toronto. And she says that there and her sister and the two boys be getting off soon because they were a suburb of Toronto can't remember what which one but they're getting off before and I still have miles to go before I got to Union Station in Toronto which is like downtown Toronto basically I guess but so she said you know you, you really got to come visit me and I should come visit you and gave me her uh, wrote her address out for me and, and I did the same and um, we exchanged phone numbers and um, agreed that, you know, we'd 
I thought, well, at the very least, we could write each other letters, too, you know? That'd be kind of cool. So anyways, their station comes up, and they, um, they all get off. And now this is late in the afternoon. On pretty much the fourth day. And four days of traveling on a train, you get kind of... Sweaty and sticky and gooey and unpleasant, but I couldn't wait to have a shower. So we say our goodbyes and they get off. I was kind of sad to see her get off. And by this point, mistake was I go to get my suitcase and they have to unload it from the train and I kept thinking well good grief it's taken a long time you know my train leaves pretty soon what if I miss my train now if I just sent my suitcase from Vancouver to Windsor it would be transferred for me onto the train I would just get on the train and go but I had to wait for my suitcase. And um, I thought, oh man, this is taking a long time. Finally, I get my suitcase. I thought, well, they wouldn't leave without, without me, you know. <laughs> I go out there. And what was, you know, an hour earlier, very, very busy place is now very quiet. There's not a train in sight, you know. And there's two of them standing there. And I said, um, where's the train to Windsor? And the guy said, well, it left about half an hour ago. And they're both looking at me like, geez, kid, you know, you know, you're going to be okay, you know. And um, so I said, okay, well, not much I can do about that. So I went up to one of the ticket agents. you miss your train? I explained. He goes, kind of looks at me like I'm a dummy, right? He says, well, we'll get you another ticket for tomorrow morning at, can't remember what time, but it was early. I thought, great, okay, that's fantastic. So I got that. So I thought, I'll just poke my head out the door, see what Toronto looks like. I want the door up, walk up the street, and it's just hammer and rain. It's coming down sheets. Just, oh, it's just raining. So I go back in. I have to tell you, Union Station, in Toronto. Beautiful old building. Or it was when I was there. But 
sitting there. Oh, I know I had to phone my dad first. I had to phone my parents and tell them what happened. So I, I phone, I find a, a phone booth and I phone collect. My dad answers. And I said, uh, Dad, I'm in Toronto. I missed my train to, to Windsor. And my dad pauses and he goes, Oh no. And I thought, Oh no. Well, that's not very encouraging. <laughs> So I thought, oh man. So I didn't know what to do. So I just said, well, I'm just gonna wait here. I said, Dad, I got another ticket for tomorrow morning. I'll just have to sleep in the train station. So I talked to my mom for a bit, then I talked to Dad again, and then I said, I'll phone you when I get to Windsor, but could you phone Richard's mom and let him know that I won't be coming till tomorrow morning? So they said they would do that. about probably about 40 and he says yeah my wife and I just got into town we could use a few bucks can you help us out and I'm thinking buddy come on man I'm a kid you're asking me for money he didn't look like he just got in I could smell booze on his breath I think he was sitting in the bar probably ran a low on cash and wanted to get some more and then I start seeing all of, of uh, you know, people that made me feel very uncomfortable and this sort of thing, and, and I just wasn't used to that, that whole big city element. So anyway, things started to thin out after a while, less and less people, so I had to find a place to sleep. So I went in this one big waiting area, there's all these old wooden benches, and those people were crashing out on those and on the floor, so I decide, why well, I gotta get some sleep, so I lay down on the bench, and this uh, security guard comes along, he's going around talking to different people, and this is one guy who came in, I guess just like a homeless person, quite old, the security guard said, you can't stay here, and he gets up busy, just throws a guy out, he says, you know, and he, he wasn't very, uh, you know, sympathetic. So I do not stay in here, buddy. He just chucks about. So I thought, oh no. So he's going along, he's asking this person, that person, you know, why are you here? And it gets to me. I said, why are you here? Explain my whole situation. I missed my train, and they gave me another ticket. He says, You got money on you? And I said, Yeah, I got a few bucks. He said, Okay. And he just left me. Now, this guy, he was just a young fellow. He's big, you know. He's got a big nightstick and a couple of grenades. No, not really. But um, he, um, he was a no nonsense type guy. You, you didn't mess with this guy. In one sense, that kind of made me, once he's done with me, I was thinking, well, you know, this guy's going to keep an eye on things, so I felt much better about that. And every once in a while, I would hear him walking around, you know, maybe talking to somebody or whatever. So it's good to know he was around because I was really nervous about staying in this place because, you know, this big, big train station in Toronto and like I said, I was just feeling really lonely and whatever, right? I remember at one point I got him, went to the bathroom and uh, I'd taken my shoes off so I could sleep and I came back and, and I laid down and then all of a sudden I woke up and it was morning and I thought, wow, this is great. And suddenly, the whole train station was different. It wasn't raining, the sun was shining, lots of people, real hustle and bustle. So I had lots of time to catch my train. I think I left it, I don't know, eight or nine, I can't remember, but I had lots of time. So I went and sat at this coffee bar and I was having a coffee and maybe a pastry or something, I can't remember, but I had to eat something. 
there's this elderly couple sitting across from me. They're arguing. And I'm kind of guessing they're probably in their 70s or something. And they're sitting there arguing about something. And she's saying to him, you know, if it wasn't for me, for my dad, you'd be a nothing. You'd be a nobody. My dad helped you out and blah, blah, blah. And he's sitting there just stirring his coffee, listening to her, right? Basically agreeing with her, you know, but it was just kind of, kind of funny. So anyways, I, when it's time to board my train, I, I walked down there to the train station and the guy's going all aboard, you know, and I said, train to Windsor, I just wanted to make sure it's getting the right one. He goes, yep, get on. little sister, his little brother, and um, his mom was at work, so we drove down to where she worked, she worked at a, uh, a care facility, like they used to call it extended care, things like complex care or something, looking after the elderly, like, like I said, she was a registered nurse, and she was so happy to see me, give me a big hug, and said, I'll be home to cook you guys dinner, and blah, 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 and I thought, good Lord, you know, this woman's working all day, and she can't wait to come home and cook dinner. So, anyway. So Richard and I was like, we'd never been apart. We just, 
was right on the corner. So they had a driveway here and a driveway on the side of the house because the corner was here, so they had two driveways. And I'd never seen this before, but their house had two stairs going down to the basement, two sets of stairs, one on one side and one on the other side of the house. The side they, the stairs they used the most went down to like a split level basement, then he went down some other stairs again. And they still had the other bigger stairs on the other side that no one seemed to use. It was a nice house, very roomy, very nice, and yeah, we just started having fun, you know, hanging out. It was so good to see him. And uh, one night we went to a drive-in movie, and we went and saw the Sting. Oh, I'd seen the Sting a few times, but it was a first for Richard and Owen. The three of us hung out quite a bit together. Now, Rich was playing in a band uh, called Dust. That was the name of their band, Dust. It was kind of a name they'd used just for the time being because they wanted to enter the Battle of the Bands. So I went with him. He had to register. So we went down there, a bunch of musicians down there, a whole bunch of people in there. You know, all young kids, garage band type thing. And they all signed up, and Rich signed up his band. I met some of the guys in his band. The one guy, Bob Damaris, I'll never forget his name, Bob Damaris. Really, really nice guy. He, he played the drums. He was just such a nice guy. And it was so cool that Richard was making really good friends. The kind of friends that were like him, like him you know. Saskatoon. After Richard left, I was hanging out with a few other guys, and they, uh, they were all guys that Richard knew, but they, I didn't connect with them like, like I did with Richard, so they were friends, but not, not real close friends. So I was happy to see that Richard was making some really good friends, playing in a band. This one day, we walked down to this, um, shop, great big music shop, we walk in, and the guy says, you know, if you've been here a couple of hours earlier, you could have met the Guess Who. The Guess Who is a Canadian band, they do that song, American Woman, and No Time, and No Sugar Tonight, you know, that kind of thing, you know, and I guess, because they were playing in town, and they'd been at that music shop a few hours earlier for whatever reason, and we just missed them, which was kind of too bad. So 
was very envious. He was very much into his music and all that. He always bought these, um, I guess you'd call them like teen magazines where they have, you know, pictures of your favorite bands and all that and different write-ups and all that. That was kind of cool. But going to Detroit for the day was very interesting. Huge city. So we basically hung out. We'd go to the bar, get tossed out, you know, because we didn't look. Our age had to be 19, I think. 18 or not. Well, Saskatoon, it was 18. There, I think I may have been 19, but we'd get tossed every time. But we had so much fun hanging out together. And of course, the time went fast. I was starting to run out of money. And I was using traveler's checks that they used back then. Traveler's checks. I don't know if you remember an actor named Carl Molden. He was always uh, pushing traveler's checks. You know, American Express. But, down. Um, so I had some traveler's checks, but of course I ran out. My, my parents didn't want me traveling with a bunch of money, so they said that they said that wire me some money, which they did. But every time I went to the bank, it was never there. Finally, I went to the bank, and there was money there. I think they sent me forty dollars or something. No, forty dollars back then it was a lot more than it is now. and 74 it was, but it's a lot more than it is now. You know, it'll be 50 years in 2024, like this year. It'll be 50 years this summer that I made that trip. 50 years. was still 16 because his birthday was in September and I was there like in, around August but it was nice just hanging out a lot of times we wouldn't do anything I did have some band rehearsals and I'd watch that that was a lot of fun you know they'd rehearse in Rich's basement song Suffragette City. He was ready to David Bowie and Martha Hoople, ready to Martha Hoople. And I bought this album by a band called Blue Cheer. And I brought that with me. They did a version of Summertime Blues. So anyways, just before I was on my way back, I wanted to buy something for family members and I bought, I remember buying my, my sister, this plastic lamp, it was like the shape of a mushroom, that was a plastic lamp, I think I paid three dollars for it, I thought wow she'll love this, so they wrapped it up for me, so if you picture a plastic lamp shaped like a mushroom, you know, lamp shaped like a mushroom and all wrapped up brown paper, you know. You probably wonder what that was. So the time comes for me to go back home. I'm, you know, I was there for about two and a half weeks. And in the morning I was going to leave. 
Richard's mom and his little brother and his sister were all going to drive me down to the station to say goodbye. And we just get in the car and all of a sudden, Bob, Bob DeMares comes riding up on his bicycle, comes just flying up the driveway. And we all turn around and uh, he says, oh good, you're still here. He says, I want to say goodbye to you. And you know, to this day, I thought those were the nicest things anybody ever did. I mean, he was the guy who just met me a couple of weeks earlier. And he actually got up really super early. Because it was summer holidays, he could have slept in. But just to say goodbye, and he actually lived quite a distance away. But he rode his bike all that way. Came flying up the driveway just in time to say goodbye. And to this day, I mean, I never saw the guy since, you know. But to this day, I thought that's one of the nicest things people did. I remember asking Richard about, about Bob Damaris, you know. He said, oh yeah, he was a really nice guy. I kind of lost touch with him after I left Windsor because Richard only stayed in Windsor for a short time. And what happened was the whole family moved back to Saskatoon eventually. Within a couple of years, they all moved back. His mom never really liked her there. Saskatoon was her hometown. She passed away in that city. I would see her once after that visit. A few years, six years later, when I did another trip to Saskatoon to visit them, I did a similar train trip from Vancouver to Saskatoon to visit Richard King, because that's where he was living at that point. But that's another video.
and beat this. And he says, well, don't worry about that when we get to Vancouver. My, uh, my brother's picked me up. I'll give you a ride to the bus depot. I said, really? Oh, yeah. He says, it's, yeah, we're just a couple blocks out of the way. It's not a big deal. We're going that direction. It's not a big deal. He said, we'll take you there. So that meant I had an extra $5. some food and something to drink. Right down to the penny. Didn't have a penny left. Nothing. I'm thinking, I get to the bus station and my mom is nowhere in sight. Nowhere. I'm thinking, what the heck? Now, I just thought, well, I'm going to have to phone her because I was waiting and waiting and she wasn't there. So I didn't have any money, so I bumped a dime off some guy, and he's, I said, excuse me, sir, would you have to have a dime? I could use a phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pulls it off, gives it to me. So I phoned mom. I'm glad she answered. So I'll okay, right down. So, 20 minutes later, she's there. Picks me up. I said, well, come you weren't here to pick me up. Says, well, I didn't know when you are getting in. You know, I guess I was sort of kind of grumpy. She says, you know, it's funny. A couple, of weeks, a couple of weeks ago, you left grumpy and you're still grumpy. I thought you would have mellowed out by now. <laughs> I didn't mean to be grumpy, but I just said, you know, I, I thought you'd be there to pick me up. I just said, well, I didn't know when you were coming in. How was I supposed to know? fast bullet trains they got, you know. Um, I mean, I think top speed in this train was probably 50 to 60 miles an hour, and that was across the prairies, and that was
high school. I met Linda, who I'm with now. Funny, huh? Anyways, it was it was a good trip. So I was happy to share that with you. I hope you 